G'day, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do something I haven't done before on this channel. Uh, we're going to be upgrading the factory speakers in the Mondeo with some new ones. Uh, nothing particularly wrong with the factory ones. They sound okay. Don't really sound great. They don't sound bad. They just sound okay. Uh, but we do spend a lot of time in the car, so I thought we'd give it a go. And these came up on special, so we'll go with that. So, at the moment, the factory front speakers, we've got a six and a half inch woofer, and we've got a tweeter as well. So, already got component speakers straight from the factory. Uh, we're going to see if we can do a little bit better than these ones. So I ended up with these Alpine SPS 610Cs, uh, which are component speakers, six and a half inch. Let's grab them out of the box. What are these supposed to be? 80 watts RMS. Uh, not the cheapest, not the most expensive. Uh, probably as much money as I wanted to spend on upgrading speakers. We'll have a look at these bits in, uh, in turn. So we'll start off with a woofer. That's just a straight cardboard woofer. That looks to be some kind of fancy plastic. You have a look at the magnet. Uh, yeah, one, one's a fair bit bigger. So, um, if size is a indicator of quality. Uh, that's definitely got a bigger, bigger magnet. Yeah, if you wanted to to weigh these, our factory woofer comes in at six hundred and fifty-five grams. What's that in foreign? We can't do foreign on our scales, we can only do metrics. So 655 grams. Our oh, Alpine one, 904. So yeah, a fair bit more weight, weight to them. Certainly looks to be a better made unit. Uh, so yeah, that looks pretty cool. Uh, and of course you also get, um, get an adapter bracket. These are multi-fit speakers. Let's get a new tweeter. So this is quite a weighty tweeter. Um, it's a one inch fella. The Ford one looks pretty, pretty dinky. Right, so that's our dinky wee factory tweeter. That's our Alpine one. Again, we'll do a weight test. I don't know how else we can measure quality. So 41 grams for the factory. I'm trying to keep the wire off the scale. 74 for the uh, for the uprated one. Let's see if we can squeeze that in there somehow. And we might have to modify that a wee bit. Yeah, it shouldn't take much to modify that. Uh, so we can have a nice factory look. One Charlie in the background there. Now these these tweeters are also directional. You can point them towards your listening ears. Which again, pretty cool. Uh, so on top of that, we also got these adapter brackets because you'll notice uh, the Ford ones offset. And so if we mounted it flush. This one would stick back into the window probably. Uh, so we've got these brackets here. Now I thought these were the right ones. Uh, not quite. They're almost the right ones. Uh, so I'll just have to just re-drill a, a hole on here. That will cinch up nicely. Because these fit well inside there. So I'll have a nice looking... See if I can do this without dropping everything on the floor. Oh, sugar. Like that, eh? Needs gravity. Uh, so we should have a nice looking setup there. Um, should do the job. 
Now I also went one step further. Also got some dynamat. Now obviously you can take car stereos to whatever level you want. I just want something that's a bit better than the factory. Uh, so just some better speakers, better clarity, maybe a little bit more bass, uh, just to kind of improve things a wee bit. Uh, so we've got some dynamat, which is butyl based aluminium, aluminium lined junk that kind of firms up your your bottom end. Everyone likes to firm a bottom end. So we've got the door door pack for this, which is two 10 inch square sheets. Uh, again, you can go mad, you can cover the whole car. We're just going to go around the speaker. Should be job done. Uh, also got some crossovers that come with the speakers, so it should be a pretty pretty good job all up. Uh, so yeah, um, we'll do the bits off the car, we'll mount up these speakers, and then we'll go over to the car. Alright, so from the factory speaker, you see I've extracted the connector. We made a little loom, uh, so some speaker wire, some terminals so we can plug straight into the factory loom. Um, also wrap that in Tessa tape. Thanks to Carphonics for the introducing me to Tessa tape. Uh, so we'll wrap this with this as well as the as well as the crossover. So we'll have that all loomed up nice. Nice and nice, then we get our filly on a drilly or a screwdriver, we'll screw it all together, and we should be good. So that's the plan. I'll do that and I'll show you what it looks like. So nothing's ever straightforward with custom audio stuff. Um, so this is our factory one. This is the one on the bracket, as you can see. If we put those at the right height, that one actually protrudes a bit more. It actually protrudes too much, you can't get the door panel back on. Uh, but with the Included spacer This is actually a, a direct fit so we've got one two three mounting holes that line up with the factory three mounting holes uh, So this is the way we're going to go And it should be a, a good job. It's a pretty high quality brackets. They've got nice nuts in them and Yeah, so that should I'm quite happy with that should be a good job Well, that was our factory tweeter this is the tweeter housing. Um, now this is the other one, uh, but this this plastic bezel yeah, detaches from there, so that's what this sits in. Um, here's our tweeter housing. So I've just trimmed out the hole that the that bezel fits in, and then kind of screwed it in. It's a nice tight fit. Put a load of <coughs> weld bond on there. Bonds most anything. Uh, so that'll give us a nice solid solid thing. It does come with a, a lock ring, uh, but I'm not trimming even more stuff off. Um, wasn't going on, so ram it in, fill it full of glue. Should be nice and solid. So let that set up and uh, work on the woofers. All right, so this is our intermediate install. You see we've got a one nice connector in there, we don't have the dynamat in, we're just going to see what it sounds like now before we put the dynamat in and we'll try it after. So still got the factory one on the left hand side so we're going to do a comparison between the two and um, see how it sounds. Shut me door. Find some music. So we're going to start off, we'll start off with the, the factory speaker. That's what that sounds like. My new fancy one doesn't sound that great to be honest. Uh, 
back to the factory. Well, what can you say about that? Try a different song. That's the new speaker. That's the factory speaker. together. Let's pump the bass. So I say, I didn't, I didn't come into this with any great ideas of what it would sound like. I just wanted to see if it was worth doing um, with the factory head unit. I don't know, it's hard to say it's a great improvement, uh, but of course we don't have the Dynamat in now. Uh, so yeah, we'll um, get that in and see what it sounds like then. Well, that's a dynamite install. You don't get a lot for your money, do you? It's kind of a 10 inch square and it's a six and a half inch speaker. So, got that around our speaker hole. Put the um, put the donut hole in that door panel there to see if see if we can settle that one down too. Uh, but yeah, well, um, I'll get it all screwed together finally, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, that's our final install. We've got our dynamite. We've got our harness all tested tech. I just need to tidy up that um, tweeter wire when I can, but certainly the crossover's stuck in there well. It's nicely wrapped, so it's not going to rattle at all. It's stuck with a free end pad to that, uh, so that's all cool. Uh, so let's see what it sounds like. Spin you around. All right, same deal, we've got the microphone in the, exactly the same place. I'm in the same place. Lower that down a wee bit. Right, uh, see what we got. That one. Right, so we'll start off with. That's both. Over to the factory. Sounds quite nice as a pair. That's a uh, Pioneer. No, Alpine. Factory. Um, 
Yeah, certainly the factory speakers do actually seem to hit reasonably hard. They've got a fair bit of bass to them. Uh, probably not as controlled as the Alpine. Uh, but I guess we'll just have to see how we go with both both in store. But it wasn't kind of, like, as I said, it wasn't. Just wanted to see how it went, whether it was worth doing or not. Um, just as the speakers on their own. Mm, not convinced yet. We might have to put an amp in to uh, make the most of it. Because uh, it's we just got <coughs> the weedy Ford 6000 CD head unit, which is pretty basic, doesn't have a lot of power, so it could be that we do need to stick a, an amp in, which, oh well, we can do that if we have to, um, depends how far I want to go with this kind of project, but um, yeah, I'll... Um, do the other one and we'll go from there. That's the door panel back on. You can see the woofer in there somewhere. See the tweeter's a pretty cool fit. Plus you got the directional now so you can point it to, to your listening ears. And um, yeah, nice easy job to install. Now to take these panels off on the Mondeo there's six screws, one there's six screws, two on the side, two on the bottom, two on the other side. Uh, there's a little plate in there that you can just see. To take that out, there's a Torx 20 or something like that. Uh, you lever out the silver part, there's two Torx 25s, and it just lifts off. Tweeter just slides slides out, and you're away. Um, so yeah, easy, easy car to do it on. So I did it on this one rather than the Focus, because the Focus is um, all press fit. And you're going to break clips or whatever else you do, but uh, Mondeo, six screws around the sides, three in the middle, pull it off, job done. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll do the other side and then we'll um, have a good test in the morning. Alright, so I've had a bit of a play, I've um, adjusted all of our settings, uh, so yeah, we'll see what it sounds like now. So Mike's still in the same place, I'll get you back over there. Fire up a tune. So that's the actually sounds pretty good uh, as a pair. Seems to tie together pretty well. We'll just try the other song. When it downloads, loads. <laughs> Say pretty, please. Oh, speaking little white lies. There the rest of us. You hear how shitty though? Do you see how muffled those rear speakers sound? As a pair they actually sound really good uh, a lot more clarity a lot more definition uh, bottom end is probably missing a little bit uh, so it would really benefit an amp uh, but at least we're set up now we can put in an amp and it'll sound good need to sort out those rear speakers they sounded pretty terrible uh, you can get these alpine ones in a coaxial arrangement uh, so without the separate tweeter so ultimately we end, we'll end up with that um, but yeah I think Initial concerns that it didn't sound that flash. Uh, yeah, I think that's just that it needs more power uh, than the standard head unit. Uh, so we'll stick in an amp at some point and um, 
but yeah certainly you can crank it there's no vibrations no distortion it sounds good all the way through the, the volume range um, but yeah not the wow factor you might expect from changing your speakers certainly these speakers if you read the reviews on Crutchfield I think that's one of the big car audio websites people have replaced their factory speakers they've been impressed with the results all right let's have another listen Yeah, after tuning, well, hardly tuning, turning out the bass and the mids and the treble on the head unit, um, they do seem to be firing a bit better. So yeah, I was um, impressed by my install there. <laughs> it's a quality job it turned out. It's too easy on this car, so uh, um, thanks to Carphonics for the tester tape idea. And um, there we go. So is it worth upgrading your factory speakers? Depends where you're heading, but yeah, potentially. There's certainly some benefits. Definitely sounds better. Uh, now it's all done. Um, but yeah, some initial concerns that it wasn't too flash, but I think, yeah, they're better, but definitely needs an amp. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see uh, whatever we do next. Cheers.